show tonight. It's amazing, you know, people don't think that we really uh, listen to the internet thing or the 800 number websites and all that stuff, and we really did. The inspiration for tonight's show is exactly where that came from. All the requests that we've been getting lately, how come you don't do anything for the hunters? How come you don't do anything for the hunters? What am I going to do with all this venison? What am I going to do with all this venison? Hey, tonight! If you're a hunter, at heart, I've got a feast for you. Tonight, I'm going to be cooking up a hunter's feast. Big time. But I, I'm talking about, how about a wild boar in foie gras terrine? Have you ever seen that before? And then, some grilled rabbit, sausage, that is. Over stewed white beans, no less. And then one of my favorites for all you duck hunters out there, a hunter's duck pie. Kicked up notches unknown to mankind. Well, get ready. We're going to have a hunter's feast right here on Emerald Live. going to get settled here in a little bit, see if we paid the gas bill. That will be uh, first thought. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Are you a hunter at all, Doc? Used to be. Used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got you, Doc. <laughs> that was before you were married, right? Right. <laughs> Look at all this great stuff. Honestly, I can't tell you how many requests that we've had from folks all over the country, and even a lot up in Canada, you know, about doing something for the hunters. So we said, all right, guys, do something for the hunters. Look at this. This is a little ostrich steak right here. Little uh, wild boar chops, braised rabbit, all the different birds. You know, there's so many different birds that... Uh, Beside the ones that are in Central Park, of course, there's... <laughs> you really, there's a lot of different varieties out there that you can do. And then, of course, no show would be complete without some calls. A few gadgets, Doc. Of course, I don't know how to operate them. <laughs> I thought you just used to blow in these things. We'd be out there, all the ducks would be gone, Doc, by the time <laughs> we got... Oh, well. It's a good chance. Maybe I got it upside down or something. This is a goose one. There you go. <laughs> this is a cow moose call. I borrowed these from David Letterman. <laughs> They'd be gone if you... Can you imagine that? And, of course... This is for uh, our great guy, Buck, here. This is a Buck call. So, <laughs> sorry, Buck. I guess, 
I guess I'll be using this buck when I need you tonight. Of course, if we can only operate it. Doc, I may be bringing these over to you in a second here. <laughs> I'll try to work it hey, out. Hey, this would be a good time for you to go blow it out on something. When we come back, it's Hunter's Feast. Doc Gibbs. So I'm going to start the old hunter's feast, little specialized animal down in the southwest. And uh, we use these a lot. We actually have some good friends at the uh, Texas Wild Game Cooperative that cooperates with us. And uh, we get a lot, of, a lot of these animals from them. And it's actually wild boar. And uh, don't be alarmed, it's just a pork fat thing. <laughs> and basically, uh, these wild boars, they're best when they're about 60 to 100 pound range. They're mean too, I'll tell you. But I won't go there. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shank of the wild boar, season it up, Shank's not too uh, popular. Not a lot of meat on that. Of course, I love shanks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part of the back as well, season that up. A little salt and pepper. I am really mad at myself about them calls. <laughs> I just go out there with the Monica. There you go. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, why mess around? What? Go out and play in a Monica, see what animal comes up. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I've always said I was a lover, not a hunter anyhow, Doc. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So we're going to brown those up. I am determined. I am determined right now. This is the goose. This is your brain on the goose call again. Hey, that's the duck one. I got it working now. Let's try the old cow moose call. I could use this on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> hey, how about that? Huh? And once again, for our buck, the buck call. I got it, Doc. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're just happy you're here, Buck. That's all, buddy. All right. Now we're going to brown this up. What we're going to do is we're going to brown this. You could do this with anything, folks. You could do it with beef. It doesn't have to be wild boar. We want to get that really good and brown like that. And then the next thing that we're going to do, once both sides, all the sides get nice and brown, we're doing this because we're actually searing the outside so that we can just get as much moisture, because generally these pieces like this don't have like a lot of meat or they're very tough. So we're gonna braise this a little bit, make it even nice and moist and tender. And that's what we're doing this for right here so that we can make a terrine out of this. Don't be alarmed with that name either. I'm gonna straighten that all out. Now, as soon as that gets brown, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little maripois, a little carrot, celery, and onions. Any hunters in the audience? You're a hunter too? It's okay. We ain't gonna hand you a rifle or anything. Like big stuff or little things? 
big stuff. Like real big, like caribou or deer. Deer. like deer. elephants and stuff? No elephants. Just deer. All right. Now, we're going to add about 30 cloves of garlic in here. Bay leaf, fresh laurel from the laurel tree. Love that. But look, like most herbs, it's not going to do anything until you do something to it. You either got to break it, you got to get the oil out of that. You understand, right? I mean, you could see that. Like here, let me show you. Put this in your hand like this and just kind of crinkle it all up. And watch all the oil that comes out in your hand. Yeah. Am I lying to him? It's there. It's see? on my fingers. It's like magic. <laughs> Look, bam! <laughs> so you got it now, huh? Okay, a little bit of tomato because we want this for the richness and the color. And we're gonna do a little more seasoning because those maripois doesn't uh, come seasoned. All right. Now we're gonna add some stock over this or a little water, preferably like a beef stock. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up to a boil then we're going to let this thing simmer for about three to four hours. The reason for that is, is because when we let this cool after it cooks that long, the meat is going to get so tender. See that? We're going to take, we're going to remove the meat out of these vegetables like this. <laughs> Guys are really playing with my emotions. <laughs> Don't let me have to get that other call out. We're going to remove the meat from the broth. You can see. Now, you can add a little wine to this if you want to. You know, you could always add a little, a little wine. But what we're going to do is that we're actually going to strain this now. We're going to take our stock and strain this to remove the vegetables, move the bay leaf. Now we've got just the broth in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once that gets good and drained, we're not going to use this for the terrine, but that's some good stuff right there, I'll tell you that. All right, now we're going to eliminate that. Now that's gone. Now, once this cools a little bit, we're going to pull all of the meat off the bones. That's exactly what I've done right here. This is all of that meat off the bones, strained, shredded just like that. You know what this does really well with also? The same idea, oxtails. <sighs> happy, happy, happy. <laughs> All right. What we're going to do now is I really want to thicken this stock, if you will, a little bit. It's pretty gelatinous naturally. But for a terrine, big fancy name, this is a terrine, so we can stop warring. Okay, this is a terrine. Wow. This is a terrine on plastic wrap, okay? <laughs> you line that terrine with plastic. Now, we're going to reduce a little bit of this stock down because just like to hold a terrine, what I want to do is I, I've got to add something in there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add gelatin, just like those Jello pop things. How you do that? Gelatin's a thickening agent. This is granulated gelatin, it also comes in a sheet. In order to use gelatin, just like if you're going to use cornstarch, you've got to dissolve it in cold water before you put it in your hot liquid for it to get thick. Same principle as gelatin. The only thing is, is that this is granule. So, you have to do this technique. Don't be afraid when I say this. You have to bloom. I'm not making this up. <laughs> you have to bloom the gelatin. What the heck does that mean, bloom? Watch. Cold water, gelatin. Then, go and get yourself one of these little baby ones. And I'm using a lot. I'm using a lot of gelatin to water ratio because you have to dissolve your gelatin. You have to dissolve the gelatin to get rid of all the granules 
before you add it into your hot liquid for it to get thick. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's exactly what we're going to do. See how thick that's getting already? What we're going to do now is we're going to add this into our hot liquid. We're going to lower the heat a little bit. So now we've got the meat that we've shredded, and we've got this jello of beef, wild boar jello <laughs> stuff going on here. That's okay. Now we need to get the foie gras. Yeah. <laughs> Voila! Yeah. This is the foie gras. Now, this is what cracks me up. What is foie gras? Well, that's a good question. It's okay. It's actually the, uh, the liver of... This here happens to be duck liver. In Europe, it used to be always the goose liver. But you can't have goose liver in America because of those guys up there in Washington that are, you know, trying to balance the budget. <laughs> so we'll settle for duck. And no budget. Now... What I want to do is I want to sear this a little bit. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Or I could just break it apart. Like this. Hot skillet. And then what I'm going to do is just sear the outside really quickly. A minute on each side. Come back. I'm going to show you how to put all of this together. I know you're confused right now. Don't. And then we're going to do some grilled rabbit sausage. Stick around. <laughs> some sort of satellite up there or another planet, you have landed on Emerald Live. And we're live in New York City! All right. I had a very, very good chef friend of mine in France named Mr. Roger Verger, who told me never, never waste this stuff. This is the fat of the foie gras, but I'm straining it. Oh, yeah, a couple of crackers. Oh. What an afternoon tea. Also, as you can see, I just naturally did the lobe of the foie in half like that. The other thing that you could do is, you know, you could cut steaks, if you will, slices of the foie gras, would sear it much quicker. And it may even be easier for you if doing this at home, wherever you are, to layer. Because that's exactly what we're going to get ready to do right now. So if you want to do that, some people like to leave it in a couple of pieces like that. Some people like to slice it and layer it that way. It's easier for them to layer it. So whatever works easier for you. Now, here's the deal. You want to line, you want to line your terrine mold that you can find anywhere, cooksware stores and department stores, they're real heavy because uh, terrines are made to, uh, to hold it, to mold it. Unlike a pate, most pates, like a pate, we're going to actually, would bake this. But uh, with terrines, you can see we're, we're cooking the elements in it already. Okay? That's the difference. What I like to do is now that I got all the meat out, whether it's uh, my favorite oxtail that I said or this wild boar, here's what I like to do. I like to take some of the meat out of this bowl, work with it a little bit at a time. Because you see, if I don't use all of this, I'll do something else with this. I could make like a wild boar potato hash next with this, you know? Or I could uh, do some sort of wild boar stew and a little gravy, you know, over some mashed potatoes. You know what I mean back there, right? Okay. 
Now, what I want to do also is I want to taste this, you know, because I obviously did this a day before. How does it taste? Is it too salty, not salty enough? Does it need more pepper? Is it too dry? Do I need to give it a little moisture in there? And then what you want to do is you taste that, and your brain goes, oh, yeah, it needs a little more salt. So, yeah, add a little more salt. Some pepper. I like that. Now, here's the first step. I'm going to take our seasoned meat like this, start it on the bottom. You could do this with vegetables, too, as in a vegetable tureen. So we'll do that. Then, some people like to put, like, pistachios or some sort of nuts. Whatever turns you on. It's your tureen. <laughs> Then you can take the foie gras, whether you sliced it or you're going to have it whole like this, and you can just place the foie gras like this. Come on, baby. <laughs> just like that. Now, I know the kitchen's going, oh, he did it again. I told him to slice that. <laughs> Shit, listen. I can hear him now. <laughs> All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take more of the boar meat, re-season it again. The thing is, is that it takes a bit of time, but you can see, you know, I mean, it took four hours to cook it, three hours to cook it. But let me tell you, this is one of those things that when you finish, not only are you very proud about what you did, but you want to talk about when you got, like, a lot of people coming over, you know, 15, 20, you know, unexpectedly. Oh, yeah, that always happens, you know. Oh, we were just in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, why didn't you go to Burger King? <laughs> There's one in every neighborhood. So I want to really pack this really good with the meat. So we'll keep adding a little bit of that, keep re-seasoning it. And then the final step is sort of wrapping the package, if you will. We're going to really press this wild boar in there really good. The reason why we shredded it also is because, you remember that broth that we had? Folks, this stuff right here, when it starts getting cool, I guess I could use it. Gadgets everywhere. When it starts getting cool, you don't want to put this on too hot. But after it cools a little bit, what we're going to do is we're going to stop pouring that. Not only is it going to get nice and moist again, this meat that we talked about, but it's going to just kind of hold this thing all together, you see? Great thing about these uh, terrine molds is that they'll hold that shape. Now, once we get all that in there... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> then, then what you want to do before you seal the package, this is what Mr. Verger insisted on. You take your foie gras, I don't like to w use the word fat. You take your foie gras drippings <laughs> and you add the foie gras drippings right at the end on top like this. It's a food of love thing. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this package. How do we do this? When you cut the plastic wrap for the mold, you want to cut your ends long. And then what you want to do is you're going to bring this end over here like such and this end over here like such. And then you're going to lid it. And the lid, feel how heavy that is? You know, there's some certain pâtés, like if you make a pâté, if you read like a country pâté in my books, you probably think I'm absolutely nuts, although you know that already probably, but... <laughs> Because I say, well, after the pate comes out of the oven, go out in the backyard and get yourself about three or four bricks. Wrap them in uh, aluminum foil. 
and weight the pate down. You got to do that so that you can make the fat rise. Well, we're doing it opposite here. What we're doing because of the gelatin is this is going to actually be the weight. Now we're going to put this in the ice box. Got to be in there for at least four hours. I say leave it in there a whole day. Hey, it's one of those things. Look, everything sometimes don't take two minutes to cook and eat. You know what I mean? It's a food of love thing. When we come back, I'll show you this food of love thing. Stick around. Kick it up a few notches now. I had a whole bowl of like rabbit meat over here, but you know, I mean, how much do you want to see rabbit meat being ground? You know, <laughs> give me a break, you know? So, yeah, I don't want to waste any time either. I got things to do here on the show, you know what I mean? Two commercial breaks to grind some meat. Give me a break. <laughs> Go grind your own meat. So, what I did is I ground. And I saved for you to show you the ingredients. Everybody's always looking. They, oh, you know, we had so many hundreds. I'm talking hundreds of emails and letters about what do I do with rabbit, particularly with wild rabbit. Remember one thing, wild rabbit, you got to cook it a long time. Make sure that it's, you cook it long. That's one of the things. I like just a simple rabbit sausage. No, it does not taste like chicken. <laughs> OK? It tastes like rabbit. You know, it's like you go in there, you know, it's like, you have alligator? Yeah. Well, what does it taste like? I hate that answer. It tastes like chicken. Uh, no, it tastes like alligator. All right, so anyhow. Whew. Must be all those old Ed Sullivan shows I've been watching. So we're going to take the rabbit meat, no bones. I also added some bacon. Oh, yeah, just a little bit because let me, let me tell you something. Rabbit. Oh, beside that. No, check this out. Do you know that rabbit has twice as much protein as a T-bone steak? But it has five times less fat. That's why I'm adding a little bit of the fat in there because it's got to have a little fat for some flavor. Well, you know, don't put it in then. I got some pecans I'm putting in there, too. Yeah, not whole, though. We're going to grind those up like that. So, all right. This is getting a little old. The machine sounds like it's really not feeling well. Must that be that flu academic going around? All right. You got the picture. You grind the pecans, bacon. All right. Whew. Finally, silence. Here's what I like to do. Take some fine green onion. Parsley. Hilda's happy now. Kick it way up with some cayenne pepper, you know? I like... I like thyme, and I'm using dry thyme. I like thyme in this. Some people would say, hey, add some fennel seeds. If you add fennel seeds, like when you make pork sausage, you know, and they have that fennel in there, before you add it in there, do me one favor. Just cover it with water, bring it up to a boil, steep it. Let it steep really good, and just use the liqueur. You can cut down on the seeds. I hate that. You, you having breakfast, you just roll out of bed, you ain't even read the paper yet, you got seeds in your teeth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If you like them, go ahead. 
And then I'm gonna add a little bit of my spice. That's how simple. Then I'm gonna just get down and dirty over here for a little bit. Cause I'm not gonna put them in casings. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it simple. You can do this at home. I'm gonna make them in little patties. Like little, uh, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. Mickey D's will probably have it soon between some <laughs> hot biscuit or something. Some rabbit sausage. All right, now, it's no big deal. Look, got a patty here. Make them as big as you want. Because now what I'm going to do with these rabbit patties Smell them. Smells unbelievable, too. Nice and a little spice to them, a little kick, you know, a little... <laughs> okay, now, let me get sanitary here for a minute. Get this really fancy sink down here. You <laughs> Sometimes it comes out too much and squirts all over the place. And... All right, we got the rabbit. Now what we're gonna do is this. Gonna get a pan about medium, medium high heat. Little bit of olive oil. And then, we'll season the outside a little bit. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start searing these rabbit patties. And make sure that oil gets a little hotter than what I have it right now. Now, what are we going to serve with them? Easy. Watch this. I took some canelli beans. You could do white beans, red beans, whatever you want. I take some shallots. Garlic, cut the long way. Some fresh thyme. Wow. Like rocket science. Salt, a little more salt, some pepper. Then, take a little bit of spinach with my blanched cannelli beans or whatever bean you like. No problem. Then what I do is I like to add a little Creole mustard in there just to kind of, it's a great combination. Then what I do is after they cook a little bit, I add a little stock in there, let them simmer. So now I got our rabbit sausage on, got our cannelli beans on. Now, <laughs> could be still alive. <laughs> Woo! It's a rough night. Now, I want to show you this, and I don't want to rush this. I want to show you how pretty this is. Now what you do is you take your terrine. Look at all the nice gelatin in there. Out of the plastic. Okay? See, that unexpected company just showed up. What you do is you just take it right out of the ice box. But what I want to do is show you this. Check this out. Nice little slice like this. Huh. Good. Eventually, if this doesn't work, I move up to a chainsaw. <laughs> but I, at the end, win. Look at that. You see that? All the meat, the nice gelatin. Look at the foie gras. We're going to slice it up. We're going to have a party. Stick around.
everybody. We are kicking up the old Hunter show, Notches Unknown to Mankind here on Emerald Live. All right. We got a bunch of folks out there now. See how the gelatin just like works like that? Isn't that beautiful? Nice pieces of foie gras. Guys got some of that out there? Little slice here. See, the gelatin holds it all together real nice. Nice little terrine of wild boar and foie gras. You guys like mustard? You like mustard? My kind of guys. OK, I've got a little double action here for you guys. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Double action here. A lot of people don't know. Here you go, guys. Thank you. Enjoy. A lot of people don't know what to do with those birds. They go out there. 109 varieties of ducks are out there. You know what I mean? They don't know what they're shooting. Then they get them home. They don't know how to store them. In the south, after we clean them, we put them in the uh, plastic milk cartons, fill them with water, put them in the freezer. That way they stay in a block of ice. Keeps the birds really happy in there. You got to know your bird. You got to know what kind of bird that is and where it's eaten. God help you if you have one of those ducks that only eats fish. Can you imagine how that duck's going to taste? <laughs> Anyhow, we won't go there. I got a little maripois, carrot, celery, and onion, onions that I'm sauteing. And then I'm going to take some of the duck meat. Discarded, I got some mallards, I've got some teal. I've got a bunch of wild duck in there. I'm going to add that duck meat in here. Stop browning that duck meat up. Now, if you want to add wine, you can add wine. I'm going to add a little thyme, a little oregano, crushed red pepper, and some salt. And let that duck meat just kind of cook a little bit. Now, meanwhile, I took those delicious rabbit sausages or rabbit patties Put them inside the oven. Got more in there, too. Doesn't that look good? So, how you can serve it up is you just take some of those delicious cannelli beans that I put with a little bit of mustard like that and spinach just on the bottom like that. Not bad, huh? And then take our rabbit sausage. If you want to have two, you can just have two. If you want to have three, have three. I'm going to have four. That's what you can do with that rabbit sausage. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this duck pie. Stick around. Everybody, Emma Lagasse here, and it's a little duck potty we're having right now. A little hunter's duck pie. I added a little tomato paste in there. And whatever kind of button mushrooms you want to add, slice, button, whatever, you can add those in there. Then, once they start cooking, you season these up a little bit. Then what you do is take whatever kind of broth you have. Obviously, you don't have duck stock just laying around. Use brown chicken, you could use beef, whatever. You could use water, just flavor it. My friend back there earlier said, oh, use the wine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now watch this. See, I got some flour here, right? I'm going to add some red wine to that flour. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissolve my flour inside of the red wine. You see? Exactly. This is, gonna, this is actually what's called a slurry. No, I ain't making it up, honestly. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to add that slurry into that. And that's exactly what my friend said back there, is we're going to thicken it up like that. So we've got this mallet and teal, this duck pie. When that comes to a boil and we let it simmer for about 20 minutes, right? We put it inside of this oven container. I take some sweet potatoes, mash them, and put that on sort of like the kicked up, you know, that stuff. What is that called? That, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, the shep this is the new shepherd's pie right here. You blast it inside of the oven when you're ready. And let me tell you something. The sweetness, the sweetness that this does from the sweet, look at that. Instead of regular potatoes, you just kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. Does that not look good? Hey, what can I say? It's the hunting show, right? I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'll see you all tomorrow, everybody.